Before I open the Word of God today, I want to take this opportunity to invite you to watch our Mission Faith Commitment Report all the way from Burundi. You can jump over to the announcement segment at Church at Home and see it. It's an amazing church, what God has done and is doing through our Mission Faith Commitment giving in this pandemic. We give Him all the glory. We give Him all the honor. Thank you for being so generous. Thank you for being such a blessing to the world. Psalm 119, verse 33, and passages following. Teach me, O Lord, the lifestyle prescribed by your statutes so that I might observe it continually. Give me a desire for your rules rather than for wealth gained unjustly. Turn my eyes away from what is worthless. Revive me with your word. You are my hiding place and my shield. I find hope in your word. Support me so that I will be delivered. Then I will focus on your statutes continually. Psalm 119 has been called the golden alphabet of the Bible. The reason is that it is divided into 22 sections, one for each of the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Each section has eight verses, and every verse in a section begins with the corresponding Hebrew letter. For example, in the Hebrew language, every verse in the first section begins with Aleph, the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. In the second section, each of the eight verses begin with Baith, the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Amazingly, all these verses except for two in Psalm 119, this longest psalm and chapter in the Bible, all of these verses except two contain some title or description of the Word of God. Now, by using this Hebrew acrostic, this alphabet in Hebrew acrostic form, it appears that the psalmist was seeking all the possibilities of the human language in which the Old Testament was written to set forth the fullness and the perfection of the Word of God. We see something similar and most powerful in the New Testament from Revelation chapter 1 and verse 8, where Jesus, speaking of himself, says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, saith the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Alpha and Omega are, of course, the first and the last words of the Greek alphabet. The message translation picks up on this. The master declares, I am A to Z. Now think about it. Jesus is everything of goodness and everything of perfection that can be expressed by every letter of the alphabet arranged in every possible combination. Psalm 119 has one underlying theme, and we see it in two or three passages of today's text. Verse 33, teach me, O Lord, the lifestyle prescribed by your statutes so that I might observe it continually. Verse 114, you are my hiding place and my shield. I find hope in your word. Verse 117, I will focus on your statutes continually. Now here's the theme. The man who is secured, the man who is blessed, and the man who is whole is the one who continually pays attention to and conforms to God's word as a way of life. As a way of life, not a momentary, reluctant, half-hearted, feet-dragging compliance, but an ongoing observance and integration of God's ways of living by his ways. Today, we want to continue in our series focusing on a godly lifestyle. Focusing on a godly lifestyle. The word lifestyle, according to the dictionary, means the attitudes, habits, taste, moral standards, economic level that together form the mode of living. Another meaning, the way in which a person lives the way in which a person lives. I want us to take note of that. The way in which a person lives. That's where we want to focus today. Because the words, the way, 
appear a number of times in Psalm 119. In numerous Bible translations, the words way appear. Verse 33, from the Amplified, the American Standard Version, the King James Version, and others. Teach me, O Lord, the way of your statutes. The way of your statutes. That, those words, the way, mean pathways or patterns of one's life. Pathways or pattern of one's life. The words the way are translated lifestyle. In our text, verse 33, from the New English translation, teach me, O Lord, the lifestyle, the way prescribed by your statutes so that I might observe it continually. Continually. That word continually means daily. That I might observe it Daily, in focusing on a godly lifestyle, the third foundational requirement is a daily decision to choose God's ways over the world's ways. A daily decision to choose God's ways over the world's ways. You know, last week we talked about the necessity of decision in focusing on a godly lifestyle. The decision to display God's love to a broken and a needy world. Remember 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14 from last week. His love has the first and the last word in everything we do. Our firm decision is to work from this focus center. One man died for everyone. Decision applies to the first week of this series as well. A decision to live devoted to God. Remember, devoted to God. Not devotion as a mere activity, but demonstrated through total surrender to God. Decision, church, is at the heart of it all. Psalm 119 is a psalm of decision. Over and over we read in this great psalm, I will, I will, I will. Listen carefully. It's so important for you to understand no one drifts into godliness. No one drifts into godliness. It requires a deliberate choice. It requires a deliberate choice, a decision to go the way of truth, to go, of, to go, uh, go God's way. Charles Spurgeon said it this way, the commands of God must be set before us as the mark to aim at the model to work by, and the road to walk in. If we stick to the precepts, we will be rescued by the promises. Come on, in order for this to happen, we must make up our mind each and every day to choose correctly, choosing to turn our eyes away from what is worthless in the world, according to verse 37 of our text, choosing not to be ensnared by following worldly ways to gain wealth unjustly, according to verse 36 of our text. Rather, we are placing our focus in choosing to daily put God's precepts into practice. Practice, daily putting God's precepts into practice, determined to obey his word to the very end of our lives. For some of us, forget the end of our lives. <laughs> it may require a decision to obey his word to the end of the day. In Psalm 119, the psalmist adhered to God's rules as if he had been glued to them. What are you glued to? God's ways are the world's ways. You say, how can I know the difference? God's ways are found in God's word. The Bible, the Bible, the Bible is the most valuable material possession that we have in this world. A computer, for example, can add up fantastically large figures, but it cannot record the value of even one of these scriptures. If we will decide by choice to stay focused on God's word, I'm telling you the world and all its ways will grow more dim. It will grow less attractive. Listen, we know that in order to detect counterfeit money, people study genuine bills. In order to, uh, to, uh, to detect the, in the, the counterfeit, people study genuine bills. Stay glued to the Bible. Stay glued to the Word of God, and the ways of the world will be exposed. 
understand, church, that worldly ways appeal to our fleshly, sensual nature and cannot be trusted. They are diametrically opposed to God's ways. And this is because the world, under the domination of the God of this world, of Satan, he is the prince of the power of the air, according to Ephesians 2, verse 2, and John chapter 14 and verse 30. He is mightily at work, seeking to distract us, seeking to appeal to our sensual desires, our earthly desires, fleshly desires. But God, but God, as we stay focused in his word by the Holy Spirit, will expose the ways, the ways of the world, the ways in which the enemy wants to divert us and distract us. Stay hungry for the word. Stay focused on the word. Make a decision daily to choose this way of the Lord. Choose to open the word and stay focused in Jesus' name. I close with these words from Pastor Rick Warren. He says, many of our troubles occur because we base our choices on unreliable authorities. Culture, everyone is doing it. Tradition, we've always done it. Reason, it seems logical. Or emotion, it just felt right. Come on, everybody, let's make a decision to choose the way of the Lord, living godly for his glory, living godly for his glory. Let's pray together. Father, everything of goodness. Father, everything that is of perfection is indeed found in Jesus. May we truly be your people who pay attention in this hour, O oh God, and who conform to your standards. Oh, how we desire that the pattern of our life, the way in which we live, O oh God, be such that it is obvious your word takes priority in our lives. Your word takes first place. Grant us the grace each day to decide on godly choices deliberately, intentionally. May we go the way of truth, O oh God. Oh, Father, daily we turn our eyes away from what is worthless. May we decide to make the choice daily to put your precepts into practice, to live each day in obedience, laying aside the world's allurements that will only take us off the path of holiness. We choose to be your people, choosing godliness over godlessness. In Christ's name we pray, amen and amen. Now just before we finish today, if after hearing this message, you're being stirred right now, you realize that the whole focus of your life is upon the ways of this world. There's an emptiness inside. There's a void inside of you and you want to turn to God and you want to start living by God's ways. Why not make a decision to give your life to Jesus Christ? If you're ready to make that decision or if you would desire to know more about entering a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, or if you would like to know more about Nairobi Lighthouse Church, please call or text the number that's at the bottom of your screen right now. God bless you. We would love to hear from you, love to pray with you, love to help you find the Lord Jesus.